Good evening, everyone. Good to see everybody this evening. You got a copy of the songs with you? All right. Now, you folks that are listening, by the way, of live stream, you're not going to have a copy tonight. So, sing what you know and what you don't know, just hum along. Amen. So, we're going to sing Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. You should have the words there. Let's sing together. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No. But the blood of Jesus for my pardon this I see nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing this my plea nothing but the blood of Jesus oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus nothing can for sin atone nothing but the blood of Jesus naught of good that I have done nothing but the blood of Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Our Father, which art in heaven, Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, for another day of life. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be gathered once again in the house of God on this Wednesday evening. Lord, we ask you to bless our time together as we study the Word of God. And Lord, may we leave here with something we didn't have before. Lord, a better knowledge, a closer walk with Thee. Father, we thank you for these that are here this evening. Pray, Lord, a blessing upon them today for being here. And those that are listening by the way of live stream, we pray for them today. You'll bless them as well. Father God, again, we thank you, Lord, at, uh, for the place in which we can gather. And we, ask, and we just pray, Father, your protecting hand around it, Father. And Lord, as we'll pray after a while, Lord, we're going to pray for our nation. And Father, the uh, turmoil that we're in, Lord, we ask you, God, to help bring peace to this land. Peace can only come through the Lord Jesus Christ. So, God, we ask you to help us with that. Now, Lord, bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you have on the other page. You all, have, you all, copy of songs back there. It came, it came in. As they're laying right here in the seat. Uh, uh, why aren't you singing, Homer? You must be singing. Oh, there's a. I don't know how many is there, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be okay. All right. So on the other side of your page, you'll find glory to His name. That's what we're going to sing. Glory to His name. Down at the cross where my Savior died 
down where for cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. And oh, precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to was the blood applied glory to his name come to this fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul let the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to his name glory Amen. Thank you much. Thank you, Pastor Mays. Amen. All righty. Anybody in need of a prayer sheet? Doesn't have one. Nobody? Everybody done good? Well, this, these turned out, some of them didn't turn out so good. But they uh, were okay, I guess. All right. All right. Okay, let me find my copy. All right. Okay, you see the uh, things in the way of announcements here. Of course, we're back to regular Sunday services, Sunday morning, and that's Sunday school at 10, and all Sunday school classes are in the sanctuary, at least through the month of June. And we'll have... We'll donate some time to the children and then <clears throat> rest to the adults. So we'll be meeting in here. That's at 10 o'clock Sunday morning, 11 a.m. worship time, and then again 6.30 on Sunday, this Sunday. Now let's see. Uh, coming up, some things coming up you need to be aware of. Uh, June the 14th, that's be two weeks, uh, not this Sunday, but the next Sunday, um, is our annual church picnic. We always have our church picnic on the second Sunday in June. Now, uh, we have con made contact with the uh, uh, park down there, and the only restriction they have now is only 25 people is all they can gather under the shelter at one time. Around it and outside, all you want to. But uh, that's the only restriction they have to that. And, of course, the restrooms are open now. So uh, so we decided to go ahead and have it. But here is what's different about it, though. So pay attention to this part, okay? Uh, we, invite, we want you to come, bring you a chair, uh, because you're probably going to be sitting outside. I don't know that we'll take any chairs down there. Uh, so everybody has a chair. Bring it, okay? Bring your own picnic, your own picnic food. Okay, just, if you, just as if you was packing a picnic for you and your wife or you and your family. Everybody brings their own food, okay? We're not going to share food. 
and drinks, plates, forks, everything you need for a picnic, okay? Pack a picnic basket, go up here at Bojangles, get a bow box, whatever. Uh, uh, KFC and get a bucket of chicken, have a barrel of fun, uh, and, and so, you know, whatever you want to do, you want to pack it, bring it, and then we're going to have games and horseshoes and all that down there, and of course, we're going to, that's the only thing we're going to do different this year, okay? So, uh, make plans to pack a picnic and come down to the church picnic. Uh, we have the same shelter we always have, and uh, so we'll gather down there after church on that Sunday morning. Uh, and that's usually about 1 o'clock or so. And then we have the rest of the day. We'll have no evening service uh, that Sunday. Uh, so we'll be having the picnic. We invite you to come, you know, just get out. And Last time I saw the weather was supposed to be pretty good that day. So uh, make plans to be in the, at the church picnic this year. We always have a good time. And, and if you'd like to pitch horseshoes, we have them. And we'll have the cornhole boards and, and, uh, whatever, and, the, and the creeks there. They should be down by then. And... Uh, so, bring a fishing pole, or whatever, but, but whatever. And so, come join us. On the 21st, that's the next Sunday, that's Father's Day, uh, Pastor Mays and myself and those on the mission team are having to leave early Sunday morning. And so, we'll not be here, uh, but we will have regular morning service, 10 o'clock, Sunday school, Brother Russ Alvis will be doing the Sunday school in the, in the sanctuary here. And at 11 o'clock, uh, Michael Hayes. Some of y'all have met Michael Hayes before. He was in a, he did a part of a revival for us, I guess a year or so ago. And uh, uh, he'll be here to preach that Sunday morning. And we'll have some other folks leading some things. And no evening service that Sunday as well. That's Father's Day. So go visit your father or uh, whatever. And, uh, uh, and we'll, be, we'll be traveling to Florida f- for that mission uh, dinner to help Linda and Tom. Milam, uh, so we have to leave the early Sunday in order to get there the time we need to be there. So keep those dates in mind, and then we'll be back to service, regular service on June, last Sunday in June. Now we're going to phase in uh, Sunday, we're going to phase Sunday school in slowly. Hopefully by the month of July, we will start separating out the adult classes uh, and maybe the teen classes. We're going to leave the little ones to later on until we see what's transparent and going to happen. So anyway, just a few things to share with you as a way of announcements. And if you have any questions about those, then you ask Pastor Mays. He'll help you. Okay? And uh, so, uh, no, if you have any questions, you feel free to ask. And we'll try to answer them as best we can. Amen. All righty. Now, on your prayer list, you see the folks in the hospital. Continue to pray for them. Um, Alice Boring, uh, many of you all know Alice. She's a member here at the church, 94 years old, I think. She's in the hospital. I spoke to Stella Falvo this morning, and she's been having some bleeding, and they're trying to figure out exactly where, where this is coming from. They believe they know Alice has had some cancer for a good while. And so, so pray for her. She's in the hospital. And uh, these other folks still in the hospital, as far as we know. Now, if you know any updates on any of them, you let us know, but... Uh, Brother Agpoons, our missionary there in the Philippines, and uh, David Smith, that's Wallace and Bulow's son. He has this coronavirus. Uh, he's river Bazaris, okay. All right, you can cross River Bazaris off of there. And uh, pray for these others. Uh, Jennifer Wyatt, I understand. She's not in Princeton Hospital anymore, right? Did somebody tell me they moved her? They never did? Okay, well, all right. I must have misheard then. Anyway, continue to pray for her and <clears throat> Debbie Neely and these others. And continue to pray for uh, Sheila Lambert and her family as we buried Jimmy Lee. Uh, Webb, pray for this family. Betty McKinney still on tab for her surgery? She had, she had it Monday. Oh, she had it Monday. Well, we just got her here on the 19th. Well, amen. Well, good. Okay, well, praise the Lord for that. Kaylee Akers, pray for her. And then Phyllis Bishop, uh, she's under, having to undergo some testing. So pray for her as well. Pray for these folks on the salvation list. And my, my, on our country, you need prayer. Our nation needs prayer. 
What a mess. Amen. And we are in. And our president needs prayer. And uh, this whole, if we just need prayer. It's election year. We encourage you to get out and vote. Amen. Uh, you can vote now. I voted today. Our early voting has started. So uh, uh, get out and vote. There's about two or three places here in town you can go. Or if you want to wait till next Tuesday, you can. But, but man, it's important. It's important that we get out there and uh, vote. All right, anybody else tonight? Prayer request. Pat McPherson. Okay, that is Brenda Webb and Brenda Smith's sister. Yeah. Did I see somebody else? This Tuesday? Okay, Mary Jo. Who'd you say it was? Stephen. Stephen? Okay. Let's pray for Stephen today. I would just pray with my brother Steve Wilson. He's in a hospital with a shot by Stephen. Well, let's pray for Steve Johnston tonight. Sarah's going back to Paula Hospital. She's getting ready for Sarah. Amen. Pray for Sarah. Sarah, she goes back tomorrow. So, baby Jasmine, that hearing is next week. Hearing next week. And also for my brother. He's not getting any better. So, pray for baby Jasmine and the hearing she's, that they're going for this baby. And then Harold Steele, Sue's brother. Anybody else? Unspoken, Unspoken request here. Anybody else? Amen. Remember these. Anybody else? Sandy Bowden prayed with Michael a couple of weeks. Pray for, pray for Michael. Cruz and Cheryl. Robin Cleavers. Robin Cleavers. Pray for Robin tonight. Well, we have a lot to be thankful for as we go to the Lord tonight. Thank you for the beautiful day, for mercy and grace, for watch care. Thank God he watches over us, takes care of us. So let's look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Our Father, which art in heaven, almighty God, our loving Savior, Lord, we come before the throne of grace again. Thankful, God, that we can. Thankful, God, we have the freedom the privilege. And Lord, thank you, Lord, that we're saved by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, that gives us access to the throne of God tonight. Pray, Heavenly Father, you forgive us, Lord, of our sins today and our shortcomings and, Lord, even our uh, times of weakness. God, we pray that you'll help us. And, Lord, that you'll forgive us if our thoughts have been wrong, if we've handled something wrong, and, or maybe we didn't do what we are supposed to. Father, we just ask you, Lord, to forgive us and thank you, Lord, for that grace that is sufficient and mercy that meets us, Father, where we are. Thank you, God, for giving us this opportunity to be in this house tonight. And Lord, thank you for the protection and, Lord, the hedge that you've built around us. We pray, Father, for safety for our families and we pray, God, for safety for our church. And Lord, we pray for a nation that's in turmoil tonight. Lord, as there's many, many, many people and evil evil has sprung its evil head. Many people are in harm's way. Some have lost their lives because of hatred. And Lord, I just pray, Father, that you'll bring peace to this land. Lord, it's not going to come from anywhere else. So, Father, we ask you, Lord, to uh, just grant peace. And for those who are suffering tonight from, uh, from injuries or lost loved ones, God, we ask you to give them that your comfort as only you can. We pray for our president tonight, Lord, and Donald Trump and, uh, and, Pre and Vice President Pence. Lord, as they're faced with this terrible situation, 
Lord, the enemy is just on every hand. And Father, we just ask you, Lord, to surround them with that grace and mercy you can only give and give them wisdom in this time of turmoil. Pray, Father, for our governor. And Lord, we just pray for everybody tonight that's facing difficult choices and decisions, asking you, Lord, to give them tonight what is necessary, Lord, to do the right thing, to fight off the enemy. Lord, I just, we ask you, God, for that help tonight. Lord, we need it, Father. We need the boldness to stand up in the face of the enemy that wants to tell, wants us to say that evil's okay. God, help us, Lord. We need your strength. For, for these thing, kind of things weaken us, and we just pray for your help. Father, we pray for our service. Lord, we pray for our service Sunday. Pray for Pastor Mays, Lord, as he'll be conducting these services. Ask you, God, to help him, strengthen him, give him the right words, watch over him, and protect him. And, Lord, we pray for uh, many, many churches that are meeting even this very hour, Lord. And we just pray that you'll help these churches, God, especially those that are preaching the word of God. Strengthen them, Lord, tonight. Father, we pray for the needs of our people. Pray for those that are lost. Lord, we got people on this salvation list that are lost. And, and Father, I pray for, for them tonight. I pray for Steve Johnston, Lord, as mentioned here tonight. Father, we pray for his soul. Lord, we ask you to touch his body with the cancer. But, Lord, more importantly, we pray for his soul. Lord, he'll realize that he needs a Savior. Lord, he'll be saved. Pray with these others, Lord, that are listed here in families tonight. Asking you, God, to bring salvation to these lost souls. And, Father, we pray for these in the hospital, Lord, that you'll help them tonight. We pray for Debbie Neely tonight, for her, for Jennifer White as she continues to fight this disease, and baby Gabriella, and Lord Sabrina McKinney, and for Brother Agpoon tonight. You'll be with him there in the Philippines, and Alexis Dawson, and Jean Short, and for Nancy Lane, and for Alice over here in the Princeton Hospital. Be with her and her sister Stella. We pray for David Smith as well, fighting this coronavirus. We pray for Pat McPherson. Lord, tonight it was mentioned having surgery. And Lord, we pray for Mary Jo, be having surgery next week. She'll be with her. And Lord, we're thankful to hear that the surgery went well for Betty. Lord, that you'll bless her and help her with this upcoming surgery. For Stephen tonight, we pray, Father, that this bite from, from this tick won't cause new Lyme disease. And Lord, we pray for Sarah tonight. We thank you, Lord, her surgery went well. We pray she'll get a good report tomorrow as she goes to the doctor. Pray for baby Jasmine and this hearing coming up. That Father should be put in the right home where she'll be brought up in fear and admonition of the Lord. We ask you, Lord, to intervene. Harold Steele, we pray for him tonight. She'll be with him. And Robin Cleavers, Lord, help her tonight. Michael Cruz, we ask you, God, to be with him, Lord, and you help him, Father, make right decisions. For Cheryl, we ask you, Lord, to be with her tonight. Lord, watch over her and bring her home. Father, we pray for our missionaries. Many of them still, Lord, in, in, in terrible conditions. Pray for them, God. Give them their strength tonight. And, Lord, I pray for uh, these on our health list. Father, you know every need. We ask you, God, to meet it. We pray, Father, for this spirit of evilness that's floating our world today and these young, young men and women that we see, Father, in these riots that thinks this is okay. They've been deceived and blinded by the deceiver. And, God, we ask you to help them realize that this is not the right way. Lord, they need the, there's no peace in that, but they need Christ. So, Lord, we ask you to help them. And, Lord, forgive them of their sin. And, Father, we pray for our nation, again, Israel, for our nation. Lord, that you watch over us for our church. Thank you, God, for providing for us, meeting our needs. Father, we pray for others facing uh, testing, for Kaylee Akers as she's facing surgery, and Phyllis as she's facing some testing coming up. God, we ask you, Lord, to uh, have things go well for them. Lord, and help them today. Lord, forgive us, God, of our sin. But we know we fail you in so many ways and so many times. We're thankful, God, as we'll talk even tonight about salvation. And Lord, how you forgive us, and Lord, you help us, and you hold us. And Father God, we just pray you'll forgive us. And Lord, we know you will. We're your children. And Lord, we just thank you for giving us what we do not deserve, and that's grace and mercy. Now, Father, bless the Bible study tonight. May we learn something, take something with us. Lord, from this place, and whatever's accomplished, Father, we'll praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, we're in the book of Exodus. Now, what I need you to do, um, 
Find your place in Exodus 29 and uh, then go over and put a marking. Uh, if you've got something to mark with your, in your Bible, a ribbon or a piece of paper, in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 8. We're going to be a flipping back and forth to these passages of Scripture and some others tonight as we continue our study here in the book of Exodus. Anybody not received this picture? We handed these out uh, maybe uh, a week or so ago on the dress of the high priest. And if you did not receive one and want one, then you okay, you want one. Anybody else didn't get one and want one? Anybody else got one? Or you just don't want one? Okay. If you don't have it, some of you may have got it last week. Was it last week? Whenever it was. Now, we're, we're, we done went through that, what you're looking at. And um, um, we'll talk a little bit about it tonight. But we've done went through all these pieces of garment that the uh, high priest and the priests were required to wear. Did you all need one over here? Somebody over here? Larry, you need one? He's coming down your way. Um, tonight, what we're going to get into, now that we've come through uh, the requirements uh, for the dress of the high priest and the priest, there was a little bit different dress for the high priest as it was opposed to the priest. They all had the coat and they all had the ephod, and, but you know the, the, the headwear and some of those things were different for the high priest. We've come through all that. Now tonight in Exodus 29, what you find in chapter 29 is the consecration, or we'll call it the ordination service to uh, set apart, set aside these priests for the work of the ministry. Now, um, let's see, Exodus 29 is where we'll start, and we're going to bounce back and forth here just a little bit, especially back to Leviticus chapter 8 as we talk about this. Now, this is this process, it's a seven stages that the priests will go through as an ordination process to set them apart, to ordain them for the work of the priesthood. Now, let me remind you something. If you've been a fallen in the book of Exodus with us, if you remember back early in Exodus, God had intended on a priest to come out of every tribe. You remember that? He intended on a priest to come out of every tribe. Uh, but circumstance being as it was, and of course of how they conducted themselves and, and disbelief and all that kind of stuff, then God uh, said, no, no. And so he brought it down to the Levitical tribe. And then the priest, not, and then he went further down than that. He went down to a particular family out of the Levitical tr tribe. And my memory served me right, so that was the Kohathites. And from the Kohathites came the priest, which is the very family that Moses and Aaron and Miriam and all them came out of. And so the, the, the high priest here is Aaron, uh, and in the, the priests are his sons, and they were who? Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, and what's the other one? Ithamar. Was it Ithamar? Somebody help me. Uh, well, let's just say it was Ithamar. Uh, and if, and if, if I'm wrong, y'all can correct me later, but I think that was his name. I know there was Nadab and Abihu and Eleazar, and then I'm almost sure it was Ithamar, right? Uh, am I right, Homer? Huh? I don't see what my little sheet Okay. Well, somebody check me out. Ithamar, okay. All right. So these were, these were the high priests and the priests. Aaron was the high priest. And uh, so now we're going to see the process, and we won't get through all seven of these tonight. There was a seven-stage process. It lasted seven days, this ordination service to set apart these high priests. And they go through this routine every day. And uh, so we're going to begin in chapter 29, verse 1, 2, and 3. talks about the materials that's needed for this consecration service, for this ordination process to take place. And let's look at the first three verses. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Take one young bullock 
and two rams without blemish. Now, we studied these sacrificial offerings. You remember, remember studying them? We went over to Leviticus chapter 1, 2, 3, and all of them. We studied these different types of offerings. So when you hear of a bullock and two rams, what kind of offering was that? Was that top of the line or bottom of the line? Top of the line. That was most expensive. The best. And, of course, these that were being, they were being set apart for the work of the priesthood. Uh, uh, ordained by God, so the best had to be used. Amen. By the way, God deserves the best. Amen. And so they were to take a young bullock and two rams, and we'll see these a little bit later as we talk about them. Probably don't get to them tonight, but, but we'll see them later on. Verse 2, And unleavened bread, and cakes unleavened, tempered with oil, and wafers unleavened, anointed with oil, of wheaten flour shalt thou make them. And thou shalt put them in one basket and bring, uh, and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. Now, we'll later on, probably not this week, we'll get to this basket of food. Uh, it shows up again later on at the very end of this ordination process. And, of course, you remember we went through the different types of offerings and sacrifices, and one of those was a fellowship. Remember, a fellowship offering, and uh, where they fellowship and they had meal and they ate together. You remember, and uh, and so this will show up towards the end. This basket of food that's been gathered up. So it'll, some of it'll be offered. Some of it'll be given to the priest uh, for them to uh, join in in a fellowship meal and a fellowship offering. Okay, having said that, let's go now through the seven stages of this ordination process. And we'll probably get one, two, three, and four tonight if we follow the routine from this morning. So, uh, number one, the very first sta stage in this process we find in verse number four uh, of chapter 29. And Aaron and his sons shalt thou bring unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall wash them with water. Now let's turn over with me to Leviticus chapter 8. A very simple verse in verse 6. It simply says this. And Moses brought Aaron and his sons and washed them with water. Now what do we have here? Well we have th this, uh, this uh, washing of them. Now I want you to understand it's a one time process. Throughout the Bible you find many phrases that many words that represents sin in the Bible. One of those would be dirt and filth. And uh, these things we must wash away. Amen. These things we must get cleansed. Now you've got to understand Aaron and his, his sons were people just like we're people. You see, they were subject to sin just like everybody else was subject to sin. See, so they had to go through the cleansing process and, uh, and when, when later on when he makes a sacrifice for the people, he's going to first make one for himself because they weren't perfect by any means. They were sinners just like everybody else and they had to have the, their own cleansing process. And so uh, they had to wash away this uh, guilt and uh, this dirt uh, to, so, to set them aside for the work of this priesthood. Now, when, when Aaron and his sons were washed all over, it was symbolic of a complete cleansing from the Lord, you see. It was a, a symbolic cleansing of washing away that filth. Now, let's, 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 let's come to us today. When did our washing take place? If you've been saved, when did the washing take place? When you got saved. When you got saved, you went underwent a washing. Amen? A complete overhaul. Hallelujah. You see, a complete washing. You got washed in the blood of the Lamb. You got cleansed by the fountain. Amen? That flows from Calvary. That is not just a partial washing. That's a complete washing. Amen? The, the, the sin and the guilt and the, the death penalty, all those things were washed away. Amen? Now here's the thing about Aaron and his sons. They'll no more have to have a complete washing. This is the only time they'll have a complete washing. Now, with that in mind, there, there's one thing they had to do every day. 
Do you know what that was? They didn't have to undergo complete washing. But every day they had to do what? Wash their feet and their hands. Every day at the labor, they would wash their hands and wash their feet. Now, no more complete washing. That's done. That's been completed and done. But they would have to wash their hands and their feet every day. Now, what does that mean for us? Can I tell you something? You and I, when we're saved, we're saved. But we, we need a daily washing. Amen. We need to be daily cleansed. We need to take a daily visit to wash away uh, our, the, the sin of that day. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us that if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to what? Yes. Forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all, all unrighteousness. So you see, there is a daily process that you and I must go through. You, do you spend any days or every day? If you're like me, you spend every day saying, Lord, you're going to have to forgive me today. Huh? You know, I messed up or I shouldn't have done what I've done or thought what I thought or threw what I threw. You know, some days we have to say that a whole lot of times. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we need to go. That's right. A daily, uh, you know, just a daily, uh, not complete washing. That was taking care of Calvary. Amen. But we need to visit that labor sometimes, uh, every day, and say, Lord, you know, I don't know if I handled that right or not, and I pray you'll help me and forgive me. And so we see this for the priests. They'll, they'll undergo this washing, but no more will they have a complete washing. They will have a daily cleansing. Uh, their hands and their feet when they go in to serve the Lord there in the uh, tabernacle in which they uh, are working. So we have number one, the washing of the priest. Number two, after the washing process, then the priests were clothed. Now look with verse, verse 5 and 6 of chapter 29. And thou shalt take the garments. Now you have a picture of these garments. Thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron. Here's the order now that he's going to give it to you. The coat and the robe of the ephod and the ephod and the breastplate and gird him with a curious girdle of the ephod. And thou shalt put the matri upon his head and put the holy crown upon the matri. Skip down to verse 8 and 9. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. And thou shalt gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. Now you know the, uh, the high priest wore the matri, the rest of the priests wore bonnets. And uh, put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for perpetual statute, and, and thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. Skip down to verse 29 and 30. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him, to be anointed therein, and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his stead shall put them on seven days when he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. Now I want us now to skip back over to Leviticus chapter 8. And here in verse 7, 8 and 9, and then verse 13. And he put upon him the coat, and girded him with a girdle, and clothed him with a robe, and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod, and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thurim. And he put the matri upon his head, also upon the matri, even upon his forefront, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. What was written on this holy crown? Do you remember? Holiness to the Lord. Yep. In verse 13. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with the girdles and put bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. Now let's talk about this clothing process of the priest. It, it wasn't just throw on some rags and go out the door. Was it? If you notice, there was an order to these things. There was a process 
by wit. When Moses began to dress Aaron and his sons in their priestly garments, he had an order in which to do it. He started with the coat, the white linen coat. By the way, the white linen coat, there's a, there is a girdle around that coat. Then the ephod goes over top of that. And then, uh, uh, well, no, no, then you had the blue robe. Then you had the ephod. And uh, uh, then there was a curious girdle that came around that. And then there was the breastplate that hung uh, at the breast of the high priest that hung from the, uh, remember the golden the gold upon his shoulders and uh, hung the breastplate. Now, whenever the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, not when he went into the sanctuary part of the tabernacle, he wore these garments. But when he went into the Holies of Holies, he didn't wear these garments. He only wore the white linen coat, the, the girdle under, with the white linen coat, and he, only, and, and he wore the matri. Why? These things were considered sacred and holy. The rest of it he couldn't wear in there. Could only wear that white linen coat. He put off the decorations and he put off the colorful stuff because he was coming into the presence of Almighty God. He didn't have to, he was not to come all decorated up, was he? He was to come in pure form. And by the way, that's the way we come. In the presence of God, God's not interested in our decorations, is He? He's not interested in, He's interested in, in, in a pure heart, a clean heart, uh, when we come into His presence. So they had this order. Now, you could say this is their official uniform, or whatever you want to call it, but they better have it on. And they better have it on in the right order. They would not dare enter the tabernacle dressed in anything else. Why? Death. Yeah, it would mean death for them uh, to come into God's presence uh, wearing just any old thing, you see. And to come into the work of God wearing any old thing. You see, in the Scripture, in many places, you'll find that our way of, our garments we wear, and the garments they wore were representation of character and uh, of, a, uh, 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 of the character of the believer. Amen. Can I tell you something, Dave? The way we dress when we go out in public represents our character. Amen. Represents who we are and what we stand for. And, you know, people, uh, people if, you, if you go out into public as a child of God, well, we ought to dress like it. I'm not saying you've got to go out in a tuxedo. I'm not saying that. Uh, but I'm, I would ought to be clean and ought to be decent. Amen. It ought to be very representative of our God. You know, if, if God, if, if, if we went before God uh, in the wrong dress and he killed us, we'd probably all be dead today. Amen. But that was a serious thing back then. It was a sign of respect, number one, for God. We should not be dressed, us as Christians, should not be dressed in the filthy garments of this world, but we ought to be dressed in the garments of grace and the garments of mercy and the garments that God has given us to wear. Has God given us garments to wear? Sure. He's given us things that we are to dress ourselves in. And I'm not necessarily talking about our clothing. I'm talking about our attitude and how we look. And by the way, if your heart's right, your clothes will be right. Amen. Amen. That's just the way it is. Uh, if, if you're right inside, you'll be right outside. Amen. A person that's not right outside better question what's on the inside. Right. Amen. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 4. I want to read some scripture from Paul. Pastor May's been preaching from here in, her Bible, in his Bible study. And uh, book of Ephesians chapter 4. And I, I just want to read these scriptures. We won't dwell a whole lot on them, but, but uh, you'll get the idea here as we read them. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and I want to re uh, read beginning in verse uh, 17. Here we put off the old man, we're putting on the new man. This is the garments that he's talking about here. It says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, 
being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto the civilness to work all uncleanliness with greeting, uh, greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation or your conduct, your way of life. That's what that word conversation means. You put putting off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore put away lying, and speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. You see the garments here that he's given us? Now, can I say this while you're turning over to Colossians chapter 3? We live in a world today uh, and all these things that's going on that, that, it, that uh, it's hard to put on the right garment. Amen? I'm just being truthful with you. Um, maybe I ought to hush while I'm ahead, but... Uh, but it's, it's hard. You know, I've watch, I watched some of these riots taking place on TV. I mean, I mean there's people get, being hurt. I'm seriously hurt. Some dying. Uh, and I thought about it, and I watched some of those kids. And most of them are kids. You, you notice that? Most of them. Probably not all of them, but it looks like young teenagers or young people. And uh, uh, I, I watched them. And I thought, my goodness, how sad that is. To see that they think that this is okay. See, they're missing something. You see. They're, they're somebody somewhere. Uh, and maybe, may, Some of them may have even come from homes where they were taught right. And, the, and can I tell you, that's a product of Satan. Pure Satan. Pure hate, pure evil. And you know, it makes me want to bubble. Just, you know, it just angers me. But you know, that's not the right way to be. We're really to pray for them. Pray for the salvation of their souls. Uh, because they need Christ. Because that's not a product of Christ. By any means. And they've got their own garments on. Amen. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. I want to read this. Begin in verse 1. For if ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. Now, you know what's telling us? That we were just as guilty at one time. But something happened. I'll tell you what happened. You changed your clothes. Amen. You got new garments. But now, he says... But now you also put off all these. You took off the old garments. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man. Here comes the new clothes. 
which is renewed in knowledge out of the image of him that created him. You see, with the new clothes comes the mind of the man who gave you the new clothes. <laughs> Amen. That's of him that created him. Uh, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, here it is, put on charity, which is love, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So you see, we have these new garments uh, that we put on. And we ought to put them on with pride, with joy, to be counted as the child of God. These priests would wear their garments with honor and dignity because they were garments of God. You see, Christ takes away the old filthy rags and he gives us new ones to wear. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, what does it say? If any man be in Christ. He is a what? What does it say? All things? Behold, all things become new. So we've seen the washing of the priest, the clothing of the priest. Number three, now we see the anointing of the priest. Now let's look at verse 7, chapter 29, verse 7. Here it says, Then shalt thou take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Now let's go down to verse 21. And thou shalt take of the blood that is upon the altar and of the anointing oil and sprinkle it upon Aaron and upon his garments and upon his sons, and upon the garments of his sons with him, and he shall be hallowed, and his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Now, go with me now back to Leviticus chapter 8, and let's look at verse 10, 11 and 12, and verse 30. Verse 10, Leviticus chapter 8. And Moses took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle, and all that was therein, and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all his vessels, both the labor and his foot, to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him to sanctify him. And Moses brought Aaron's sons and put coats upon them and girded them with girdles and put bonnets upon them as the Lord commanded Moses. Down to verse 30. And Moses took of the anointing oil and of the blood which was upon the altar and sprinkled it upon Aaron and upon his garments, and upon his sons, and upon his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aaron, and his garments, and his sons, and his sons' garments with him. Now, the, the third stage of this ordination process was the anointing of the priest. Now, you notice this word was, you, you, you found this phrase, the anointing oil. Now, can I tell you, this just wasn't any old ordinary oil. This was a sacred oil that they were used. It was not to be used on anybody else. But if you notice in the reading, it was used on particular things. It was used to anoint the tabernacle. It was also used to anoint the furnishings of the tabernacle. It was also used to anoint the altar and the priest. Now, it could not be used anywhere else. It was a holy anointing oil, a special oil used for these particular purposes. Now, what was the oil? Well, go with me to Exodus chapter 30, and it gives it to us, beginning in verse 22 of Exodus chapter 30, and all the way down to verse 33, you have this anointing oil and the instructions of the anointing oil. Let's read it. Verse 22, Moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee uh, the principal spices 
of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint, here, here comes the instructions, thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the ark of the testimony and the table and all his vessels and the candlestick and his vessels and the altar of incense and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels and the labor and his foot. Thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your uh, generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured. Neither shall ye make any other like it. After the composition of it, it is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger shall even be cut off from his people. So, a holy anointing oil. This is the anointing oil that he's talking about here. That he's now going to bring and anoint uh, Aaron and his sons with. Now, Moses would then pour that oil on Aaron's head, and guess what would happen? He would run down. Guess what would run down? Down his face, down his beard, across that, he's dressed now, across that ephod. And what's it going to cover up? What's, what's, what's right here? It's going around down over top of that. Breastplate. What does that breastplate represent? Well, the oil represents the Holy Spirit. The, the breastplate, the jewels in the breastplate represents the 12 tribes of Israel. So this oil, as, as, as this holy anointing oil is a perfect symbol of the unity that God has established through this priesthood the unity of the people. And if they would do as God had instructed them to do, it was part of that holy priesthood, that unity. And by the way, if we want to bring this to us today, when you and I got saved, guess what we got blessed with? The Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit of God, when we get, we get saved, then we are baptized, amen, into the Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit fills us top to bottom with His presence. Could I tell you something? When you get saved, you don't have to beg for the Holy Spirit to come in. That's right. You don't have to have a special vision from God to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I've had people tell me, some guy, and I may have told you this story, they told me one time, and we was talking, and he said, uh, have you received the Holy Spirit? And I said, huh? I said, yeah. Well, how'd you do it? He said, how'd you pray? I need to know how to pray so I can get it. I said, what are you talking about? I said, I got saved. Amen. Amen. He said, huh? He said, I've been praying for years. for get the Holy Spirit in me. I said, are you saved? He said, yeah. I said, well, congratulations. You got him. Uh, huh? You see, that's our unity with God. You know what that is? That's God's presence with us. That's our down payment of a future glory. Amen. With God. That's our gift from God. That's God's presence with us. Uh, it becomes a part of us. It becomes our guide. Read the book of John. Amen. Read the gospel of John. You see, that is the, the, the God's presence with us. You want to do a good study sometime. It's starting in the, in the first chapter 
uh, start in the book, read the book of John and note how many times the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Just pay attention. And what it says about him and all, those, all the talk of the, of the Holy Spirit and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So this anointing, this anointing of the priest was a sign of unity. A unity with God and the priest's unity with the people. You know, the priest was to bear the burdens of the people. That's the, you know, he had the names of the tribes of Israel on his uh, shoulders. He bare their burdens. Carried them close to his heart. He bore them into God's presence. And if I, you, we read it. The Bible commands us to bear one another's burdens, doesn't it? Carry, care for people. That's part of that presence of that Holy Spirit in unity. That we have. Uh, when the Holy Spirit moves in, God's presence moves in. And when God's presence moves in, that changes the, the garments. <laughs> That's part of the cleansing process. The changing of the garments. The presence of God's Holy Spirit. So we've seen the washing of the priest. The dressing of the priest. Then the anointing of the priest. And that's as far as we're going to get. We'll pick up the fourth one. I'll give you the rest of them as we'll talk about them later. Uh, number four, we'll talk about the forgiveness of the priest. I've told you already once before, uh, they were people just like everybody else. They had to go through a forgiving process. You know, their sins had to be forgiven, and their sins had to be atoned for. Number five, we'll have the, uh, the priest in being completely dedicated or set apart to God. If you remember on the, the burnt offering, what do you remember about the burnt offering? Was there anything left when that, that ram, this is where the rams come in, and the bullocks, was there anything left of that burnt offering? It was totally consumed, remember? Totally dedicated. And so we'll see that as the fifth process. Then the sixth process, we see where the priests were marked by blood. There'll be blood placed upon the right ear, thumb, and toe. You'll see, we'll talk about all that when we get there. And number seven, we'll talk about the feeding of the priest, which is the final process of the stage of this ordination of the priest. Uh, so we'll pick that up next week. Uh, well, it'll be two weeks. I won't be here next week. Uh, I'm heading out of town. I'm, I'm, I'm a goner. You pray for us. We're leaving Saturday, and we'll be back by, by September anyway. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll be back by next Sunday. So Pastor Mays is going to be preaching up a storm Sunday, so you pray for him. Amen. I appreciate him filling in for me and helping out. Well, as far as we're going to go, so we'll pick this up a couple weeks from now. So you, you continue to read Exodus 29, 30, and Leviticus chapter 8. And all these run together. Okay. Well, let's stand to be dismissed tonight. Thank you much for your attention. I hope this has been help to you. I know there's a lot of material in these things, but I sure hope it's helped me learn something. Father, thank you, God, for giving us this time together in the house of God. Lord, thank you for folks being tentative. And Father, we pray that we glean from the Scripture something to help us. Lord, give us safety as we go home. And Father, we thank you for these who have been listened by the way live stream that you'll bless them as well. Uh, Father, bring us back here at the next point in time. And Lord, we just love you and thank you again. We ask you, Lord, to bring peace to our land today. Peace through Jesus Christ. Father, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to give to the orphanage fund, you do so in the front.